guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today on the podcast we have Kyle Cook from Summer House. I'm wearing a Loverboy sweatshirt for the occasion. Um, you know, I've interviewed Kyle, I think, for every season of Summer House, including, and also Winter House, um, but this is the first time that I ever interviewed him without Amanda. They've always been paired together, so it was fun to get some time just one-on-one with Kyle. Um, and I had just seen him at the Summer House premiere party on Monday, um, which was really fun, and honestly, considering all of the perceived tension around this cast going into the season and coming out of the season. The vibes were pretty great. Uh, Danielle was not there, so it was hard to read, take a read on Lindsay and Danielle in person, but Kyle and Carl seemed like they were in a great place. And, um, you know, it's always great to interview Kyle and to, to get his perspective on things. He's always really generous with his time. And, um, you know, we got into it about him and Carl and sort of what what leads to this tension, how, you know, his decision to quit Loverboy affects them. And, you know, I think Kyle feels a little blindsided by the whole thing, but. Ultimately, I think, you know, as we talked about, it's probably going to be better for their relationship to not have that business aspect kind of intertwined with their friendship because it's complicated to work with people that you love. And whether that's a friend or a family member or, or, or a partner, that complicates things. And, um, you know, there's a lot of factors as we talked about in this interview. Um, you know, we got into Lindsay and Danielle of it all and sort of what Kyle's read on, the whole, on that whole situation is. Um, but yeah, I think this season of Summer House is going to provide a lot of answers to a lot of questions. I think, you know, we know where things net out, but we don't know what leads to them. Um, I think a lot of viewers are confused about the Lindsay and Danielle of it all, especially. Um, and I think that we're going to get some answers there, but uh, it's going to be kind of a slow build. So anyway, keep listening to my interview with Kyle Cook. Tune into Summer House Mondays at 9 p.m. on Bravo. And please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we're here with Kyle Cook from Summer House. Season seven is here, Kyle. I just saw you at the premiere party. How are you feeling? It's premiere week. What what are the vibes like? It, premiere week is always overwhelming. I mean, it was awesome to see you. You, you kind of get reacquainted with your, your little Bravo world. Um, but I guess the last couple of years, just because I still have my startup, I'm still working a normal, well, not a normal, you know, absurd amount of hours. Mm -hmm. So you layer this on top. This first week is always a little overwhelming. And then you kind of slip into the new normal as the season airs. <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. Um, and I mean, I mean, I feel like the intrigue around this season is kind of sent is center. I mean, it, it's always been centered around something tough, but this is like a different kind of like, we're kind of centered around, around sort of a fallout of a friendship. Do you feel like going into this season, there's a different energy among the fans or among the cast. Yeah. And look, I guess I don't think it was like a, a, a friendship falling out. I think it really just revolved around Carl and I dealing with really the only conflict or, you know, lack of alignment um, that we've ever really had to deal with. You yeah. Know what I mean, we've always been, you know, bros and, we'd almost take turns like, okay, this is your season where you're going to be the pinata. You know, it's, it was like, <laughs> it's true that I had, it is. I'd have a hard season and he has a hard season. We've always been there for one another. And this one kind of took me by surprise, you know, just because I didn't know, you know, our business relationship was going to soon be everybody's business. Right. And, um, you know, look, I think that there was a little awkwardness in the air, from Winter House. I think a lot of people think that that revolved around Austin and us pushing like this dick touch gate, as some people have coined it. Um, what a beautiful but, name. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it really, I don't think it had honestly anything to do with that. I think people are still coming, yeah. coming to terms with, with, you know, Lindsay and Carl as a couple because we all have long histories with them individually. So it's totally. not just like, Oh my God, this new couple is into entering the winter house for a quick little trip. It was, it was way more complicated than that, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that some of that, I think honestly, a preview of that was in last season reunion. It was like, that was a pretty, there, there was some kind of, there's a lot of tension in, in, in the air, I think around that and people were sort of trying to figure that dynamic out. So, but let's, let's talk about you and Carl, because I feel like, I mean, you guys have been friends for so long and, and the show, I feel like must've brought, brought you guys so much closer but then you also decide to start working together. And that's obviously always a risk of whether you're working with a friend, a, uh, you know, a partner or a family member. Was it, and it must've been a fruitful, you know, working relationship as well, but was it worth the risk on your end to 
to go into that together? Yes. I mean, the, the short and sweet is, you know, no regrets. Uh, yeah. That's our motto at Loverboy. Good times, no regrets. You know, I think that early on, it was amazing to have his support. You know, he believed in what I was doing, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that little bit of conviction from friends and family. And then Carl meant a lot. We also needed a sales guy. I also wanted to give Carl a shot. You know, I think that he had, you know, uh, a career that had kind of hit m- multiple roadblocks. Some of that, I don't think he was working for the right companies. Right. You know, I'm like, listen, when you build something from the ground up, that is totally different. You know, and, and I think Carl, long before he kind of confronted some of his addictions, I, I knew he needed purpose. He needed a reason to to get up in the morning and not For go sure. out at night. And so, look, we and the fact that we did work together, and then when COVID opened up and we could go on these trips together, it was incredible bonding time. You know, like I'm working a lot of hours, and if we weren't working together, I wouldn't see much of Carl, just like, I don't see much of any of my friends. Right. And, and I'd always have to kind of remind Carl that I'm like, listen, like I, I value our friendship, but I, as you can ask any good friend or family matter for family member, you know, for that matter, I do check out. Cause I'm, you know, this is the time to, to grind, you know, I've got a mm-hmm. startup and, and we're, and we're growing. So totally. And, and, and I feel like anybody in your position where you're filming a show together, you're real friends, you're working together. Now you both have various relationships. Carl's dealing with his sobriety. It's like the, right. the amount of factors that went into what's right. going on here is anybody would have some sort of struggle with that. And there's a lot of history. I mean, you see me hit kind of like peak breaking point, like, you know, in, in episode two, um, because there is a lot of history and in normal situations, I probably would have had to let Carl go multiple times over, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there were real challenges. But I know Carl, I know he has a lot to offer. And I kept on giving him chance after chance because I'm like, I-, I know this guy can be something great, you know? Totally. And, you know, that that that's just it. You know, I, I was willing to kind of like, you know, turn a, I don't want to say turn a blind eye, but like, I mean, quite frankly, if I wasn't working with him at the times that he was going through these struggles, I wouldn't have been clued in, Hmm. you know, and like that time where I confronted him and kind of intervened, you know, it was yet another episode where the, you know, my COO and I were very involved. Like we knew something was wrong. We were checking in on him. We were, you know, I'm practically calling the doorman, you know, so everything happens for a reason, you know, and, 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 you know, so Carl and I are in a much better place. We, we caught up before the premiere, we had dinner. Because there was some awkwardness. We were kind of like, where do we go from here? But right. I'm, I'm confident that our friendship will prevail. I, I, I think so too. And I, and I, and I guess my, my sort of last question about you two is like, you know, in the premiere, we saw some, and I mean, honestly, in last, the last reunion and also the premiere, we see some people kind of, you know, say that Lindsay was a factor, is a factor in sort of some changes that he, that, that, that people are noticing about him or his lifestyle or what have you. And then w- let's say when, when you watch that conversation that he and Lindsay had that morning when they were, when she's, they're talking about his position at Loverboy and how he's going to bring it up to you, does that affect how you think about it at all? Cause it, it, it was a pretty like level conversation and it's, it, they were kind of on the same page about it, but I guess, how does you w- w- watching that conversation back or just generally, how do you think about the role that Lindsay plays in all of this? Yeah. I mean, look, obviously things, things are complicated. We're, we're yeah. a complicated group of friends and even just going back to that, right. Amanda had been in Paige and Sierra's shoes before and was really trying to help facilitate and almost mediate the conversation because we were almost at like a standing still point multiple times over in that reunion. You know, we were just trying to help. We're like, Hey, we've seen both sides. It was almost like, you know, Andy was quiet. So Amanda and I, (laughs) you were, you were the moderators, right? Right. So, I mean, Sure, it's complicated because Lindsay and Amanda have a complicated history, right? And you yeah. know, um, you know, I think that I think the biggest disappointment from my perspective was just Lindsay kind of telling him, you're gonna disappoint him one way or the other. Mm. Right. So it was almost like, I mean, she's obviously not gonna say, Hey, don't be friends. So it's clear going way back to probably the spring that there was conversations they were having about him quitting, you know, and the 
meanwhile, I mean, I, I paid him a, a salary for almost a full year, mm. you know? So I, I just look back and I'm like, Hey, it was level headed, but you know, for him to come into the house and, and h- him and Lindsay have conversations with literally the entire cast about how he feels underpaid and underappreciated. Like that was shocking to me. Mm. So, so, you, so I, he, he could have come to you earlier and just like kind of yeah, gone through the middle I, Right. And look, in April, I had to hire a new VP of sales. I, I hadn't quite changed Carl's title. We are trying to get creative. I didn't want to hurt his ego. Mm-hmm. But there was already several months where we're trying to sort things out. And finally, um, in the beginning of June, I said, look, it's clear that we need to kind of redefine your role. You're, you're already in, a, in more of a support role, building out these markets and, and throwing, you know, and hosting some of these activations. Let's put pen to paper and figure it out. And I expected to get something within a week and then two weeks and three weeks. And then I went to Italy and then I got back and I still mm. had nothing in my hand. And that was frustrating because that whole time, he again, he's a full-time employee, but wasn't working. So right. I was like, come on, bro. Like, do we really need to have this conversation in the house? It should have been, it should have been wrapped up a month ago. So yeah, totally. Again, I've just been as patient and understanding as I could be. And, you know, I think there's lots of factors, but yeah, sure. Hosting events where people are drinking, it, I can totally understand why that's not Carl's top priority. Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. Totally. Unfortunately, that was like how his role had already evolved. Mm-hmm. So it was tough to understand, you know, I'm already paying you to do that. Right. But yeah, I think, so it gets, was- I think it gets to the whole thing of like, you were, you were essentially playing two roles. You were like, basically his boss and also one of his best friends. And I think to take the lover boy aspect out of it, the working relationship as- out of it, like it should, I feel like help, help you guys kind of have absolutely, more sailing absolutely. But I, I do look, I, I wish him the best. I mean, my COO told him multiple times, you know, Nick was like, listen, don't forget like lover boys. It, it, it was one of the only stable things you had when, when, you know, the times got tough. Hmm. And we just wanted to make sure he knew what he'd be stepping away from because, you know, we're doing, we're building an amazing company. It's the, he's the first guy to leave, you know, we're now over 20 employees. So it was kind of heartbreaking, but I agree, right. you know, it's like, let's go back to focusing on our friendship and making sure that like we're stable there and there's no awkward moments in the kitchen where, yeah, totally. where you're not even like, so, barely uh, speaking. Right. Exactly. You know, like, big gulps, huh? That's, but that's not <laughs> you guys. That's like see, watching that scene. It's like, that's not Kyle and Carl. Like to me, like that's right. like that, that, that was, yeah. Was and that, yeah. There was space. The one there. Thing I, I'll, I'll also clear it up. Cause he said, and I'll watch what happens live, you know, where, you know, I was saying he was unrecognizable, but he's just like, Hey, people evolve. But I'm like, Carl, you were dropped dead sober the previous summer and we had a great time. So this has nothing to do with me not supporting your sober lifestyle and the choices that you've made. Right. You know, you, you, you pull back on the drink in season five. So this is nothing new. Right. right? That, like, yeah. That's remained steady. Right. For sure. sure. Mm. Um, so the other sort of thing that this season is really kind of centered on, it seems is Danielle and Lindsay. And, and I think that obviously, I mean, as somebody who has known them since before the show started, like, I guess, for you, what's it like watching them get to where they are now? Like, well, how does that feel for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it it was first like, you know, me and Carl kind of being a little bit at odds with one another. And, you know, as you'll see in episode two, uh, you know, Lindsay and Danielle were clearly still in a good, good place because Lindsay, uh, I'm sorry, Danielle comes in still, you know, diehard loyal to them right. to a fault. Right. She's, she's, you know, giving her opinion on something that she knows nothing about. And that's just, that's just Danielle. She is a diehard ride or die die type of friend. And, you know, when the tides started to turn, I was like, damn, you know, like, you know, I've seen Lindy have all sorts of issues with almost all of her good friends in her life, whether you go way back to like, you know, Christina Gibson, the work is, you know, it's been, kind of one fr- friendship after another and kind of like how lover boy was the stable rock for Carl. Like I always thought Danielle was like the stable rock for Lindsay. Sure. And when things started to kind of get uneasy, I found myself on multiple occasions trying to help, trying to mm-hmm. mediate. 
Cause we've all been in that situation where like, you're trying to lay out your feelings and the other person is not listening. They're just thinking about the next thing they're going to say. A lot of that. There was a lot of like two ships passing at night and mm. just not communicating. Mm. So then it, and it, I feel like the implication is that once the engagement st- talk starts, that's when it really kind of hits the fan. Is that accurate? Or w- um, when does the, like, like what, what do you, what can you tell me about sort of what causes the the big shift? I feel like. If I could be honest, I don't think it actually had anything to do with the engagement. From mm. what I recall, uh, you know, Lindsay just was not having it when Danielle started patching up her relationships with some of the other girls in the house. Got it. You know, like Lindsay, as we've already seen, she's very controlling. And so it's like, whoa, if I'm not good with Danielle, then Carl, you can't be good with Danielle. And if all of a sudden, if it's like, if I'm not good with like Amanda, Paige, and Sierra, then you can't be good. Hmm. So again, I haven't really thought about it till now, but if you right. look back on it, I think that's what you'll see. Like Lindsay it, was it, like, it's really throughout the summer. And that's sort yeah. of how it happens. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, you know, I think Danielle started to realize, yeah, I am loyal to a fault and I'm not getting at a, I'm not getting from Lindsay what I'm putting into this friendship. And I think the wheels started to turn and she, her eyes started to open. Hmm. And what do you see what from your opinion, from your standpoint, what's the hope going forward? Is there is there a spark of hope for them to patch it up and become Lindsay and Danielle again? Or do you think it's kind of always going to be different with them? I, I think it will always be different because it did get uh pretty dark. Yeah. But I, I'm hopeful, just like both Carl and Lindsay have have said they're hopeful. I haven't asked Danielle point blank because I think her feelings are still really hurt. But um, you know, look you know, there, there are always ways to reconcile things. And I think the fact of the matter was everybody was in a weird place and everyone had different priorities. I'm thinking about like me, Carl, like Lindsay, mm-hmm. Danielle, like, you know, and, and I think that started to really drive this riff and you know, hopefully people can evolve and realize that, hey, that divide isn't actually this huge chasm. It's it's we can cross it again and, and figure this out. Totally. And I, and I guess like the, you know, there's there's Lindsay and Danielle, there's you and Carl and like you and Carl seem to be in a much better place than what we're going to see perhaps this season. Um, and, I you know, you've been on this show for now seven years. You've been on we've had a couple of winter house seasons is. <sighs> It, it's hard. It's hard because I guess, I guess as somebody who's been watching since the beginning and, you know, knowing you guys, sometimes it feels like when people are on these shows for so long, like some of you hate to say it, but like, sometimes it feels like inevitably, like something's going to break because like, th- that's just kind of how these shows sometimes work. I, I feel like, and yeah, I mean, like, look, does that you... go through your mind at all? Like, okay. Like now it's our turn almost. Um, look, I, I hope not, but yeah. Let's just be honest, because we've we've already seen it. Egos will naturally, inevitably get in the way. Hmm. Um, you know, I think friendships do evolve, right? Like it might make sense for a group of friends to spend a summer together one summer, but then there might be it might just right. not make sense the next. Yeah. So I mean, that's just life. And yeah, I, I I think I actually was listening to someone talk about like season seven happens to just be this like magic number where like things um, turn a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I can see that. I think we, we're we have a slightly slow start because we didn't throw any big parties. Yeah. So so the emphasis and the focus is on some of these these longtime friendships, but we do get back to our roots pretty quickly. Okay, I would say by like episode three or four, and. You know, look, I, I'm hopeful that like we can evolve we on an individual level and, and our relationships and friendships, and we can still make this happen in a way that feels natural because that's how it's always felt to me, right? Like this is what I would normally oh, yeah. be doing. Mm-hmm. Like Carl and I would be like, dude, it'd be so weird not to be spending the summer <laughs> in the Hamptons together. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. So, especially, yeah, especially after all this time. So yeah, I, I feel like... Again, it's, it's hard because I, I love all you guys and it's like, it's, it's, it's tough to watch these. Things I'm sure. Happen, but, I mean, yeah, you're like, but <laughs> you know, you're like, man, I've seen it all. You know, you I have- know. I mean, I remember sitting at a conference table with you, Carl and Lauren Workus before the show even went on air. So it's like, I remember that you, yeah, it was it's, well, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think, 
I think a lot of you know, I think a lot of people are intrigued in terms of like what the drama actually is and all of that. But ultimately, it's more it's more fulfilling to watch you guys be friends, you know, and 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 to Absolutely, come back yeah, around. Like, people don't want to tune in to see problems that they're dealing with in their own life. <laughs> yeah, like we can. Re- I think everyone can relate to some of this stuff, but like you know, it's I, you know. So when you think about Carl and Lindsay's wedding, they said it's going to be in the fall. What do you do? Who do you envision to be there? Like, what do you envision that to look like? Especially after you knowing sort of what went down. I mean, look, I, I, I'm always hopeful. Like yeah. I just said, you know, I think that, um, I mean, take, take our wedding, for example, we went into the summer with a, you That's know, true. a pretty, pretty determined guest list. And at the last minute we're like, shit, like, I love Andrea. I love Maya. I love Alex. Like we're one big family during the summer. It'd be almost weird not to have them at our wedding in the fall. And so no matter where we stand and where they stand with people in the house, um, you know, you never say never, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that like, I, I would hope that the vast majority of us would be getting an invite, but again, I don't know. Where on any given at. day where Lindsay right. stands with <laughs> sure. half the women in in her life. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, you know, also what's nice for you this season. And I think you felt this a little, definitely on winter house last year, a little bit last year on summer house, which is like, there are other couples to share some of like the brightness of the spotlight with that. It just takes some of the pressure off. It has, you have to feel like it takes some of the, like the weight off of you guys. Oh shoulders. yeah. I mean, I, my new thing, my, I think this is my new takeaway from reality television. You haven't really filmed until you filmed with your significant right. other as a full-time cast member. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, 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 it can't be easy. Yeah. It's a whole different ball game. Paige has gotten a taste of it. Now Carl and uh, Lindsay are going to get a taste of it. You know, it's not easy because you could be having a great day and, you know, next thing you know, people are talking about your relationship just because- Exactly. Right. And then you have to defend it. And that's just how it is. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. A couple of quick topics for you before we, before we end, Jason brought Giselle to the premiere party. What, what do you know about that? Cause I mean, they look great together. They seem happy together. What do you know about that? Anything? I, yeah. So I, I, I caught up with Jason, not knowing he brought Giselle cause he was like over in another part of the room and, and I'm like, oh my God, I've got to meet her. I, I actually was too chicken to introduce myself in God, the past because well, I know she filmed like chat chat room with Hannah. Oh, right. And the, yeah, they were I, close. You know, look, I, I I'm all about second chances. So one of these days, I hope Hannah and I bury our bury our beef. But you know, I'm thinking like, oh man, I wonder if like Hannah poisoned the well with Giselle and she thinks I'm a d bag or you know whatever. But she was an absolute sweetheart. I think the she first is. thing I said to her was like, "You're a bombshell." You're so beautiful. Um, and I'm like, look, I don't know what the age difference is, but I don't really care. Like, good on live you. Live your life, you know? Yeah, you live your life. Yeah. Exactly. It seems like Corey comes in sort of midway through the season and and gets things going. I, I know there's only three men on the cast, then the full-time cast this year. So was is that is he a welcome presence once she comes into the house? Oh, yeah. Stops by? Yeah, I mean, we I had a buddy that pulled out at the last minute. Um, due to work, he he hmm. quit Google and started a, 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 a you know his own company. He's just like, dude, I can't can't be out there this summer. So I was like, well, <laughs> you know, uh, that goes from four to three, and from two single dudes to one. Um, so when Corey comes to my birthday, uh, it was just amazing to have you know a friendly face, uh, you know, among the bros, and someone that is just there to have a good time. I mean, hmm. he. He's just got so much energy. He's super positive. He doesn't get caught up in, you know, the drama. You know, he's there for all the right reasons. And you'll see, uh, he doesn't just make one cameo. <laughs> love so. to hear that. Love to hear that. Yeah, he was, a, he was a big presence at the party on Monday. So I love that. And then exactly. I want to end it with a little a tiny bit of traders talk. Because I know you're filming the reunion tomorrow. Andy tweeted yeah. that. He asked for questions. What is your biggest question issue whatever that you're going to bring into that taping what the heck was everyone else thinking <laughs> um, i mean you know it was one of those situations where it's a big cast you know we only had so many rooms outfitted with cameras um you know and so when we were a big cast i would say from 
you start out at 20, right? You end with essentially three. Three, right. So, you know, um, it was tough to have intimate conversations to really talk strategy. And anytime that you did, someone would interrupt you. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I can't be the only one like putting all the, you know, connecting all the dots. So when are you going to bring that up? Right. Right. And so, you know, look, this was also a season one show, which I think um, there's always something to be said about these season one like challenge shows because it's not like we have the playbook. We can't like, you know, study the tapes. No blueprint. Yeah. You know, and and I think that, um, I think that's what kind of threw everybody off. There was just really no, there was no real clear winning strategy. And I think tomorrow there's going to be a lot of talk about, well, what were you really thinking? Cause you didn't, you didn't voice your opinion at the table, you know, cause it was, it was just so natural for people to be conservative. Right. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to throw someone's name out that you're that you have a, you know, a, a confident hunch about if their name hasn't been brought up, right? And the group's and already leaning it. towards banishing someone that's not you, right? And then, <laughs> and then and then if you're and then if you end up being right about that person, they could just kill you that next night, and then you'd be sent home. You know what I mean? Right. So, right, yeah. So I was, um, I literally, I kind of forget if it made the edit, but I, at one point when I knew I was on the chopping block and I'm at the round table, I'm like, guys, do you want me to lay out my entire deck of cards because not? that's not going to help i uh, it'll show you that i'm on to not just cody but i think i've got it all, it all figured out but that tips the traders off so tell sure. me sure totally you know, it, it, yeah it was it was just such a fun experiment I, i'm fun. interested to, to see you know what people say i mean only four of us have done a bravo reunion before so you're, I mean, so, yeah, you're coming in with a leg up on the, on the competition. Angle <laughs> of that. So there, there, there is, there is a blueprint for that. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I was talking to Andy about it. Cause I, it was like kind of funny. He was really into it. He was asking me all sorts of questions. Um, and, and, uh, you know, I was just like, yeah, this was a, when, when Andy's asking questions and he's like super into it, um, you know, you got a good show on your hands because he has to watch God knows how many shows, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. 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 He's not, he's, he's not taking that interest. Oh, and the last thing I, I had Kate on and I, I, I was, I kind of like right after the finale came out and I, I kind of in the moment, I was like, wait a second, like you and Kate both do have shared history with, you said Hannah and she, and right. she was kind of, I, I didn't even really co- like had, I hadn't connected that. She said that you guys yeah. kind of bonded over that initially, but then it, you, but ultimately that, that wasn't the basis of your, of your relationship. Yeah, no, it was just like one of those little nuggets, you know, she had shared something with me um, that kind of confirmed some of my suspicions. Mm-hmm. I think, I think Hannah thought she was in a safe place and she was talking, talking shit. And, there we uh, go. and basically conspiring. And I was like, Oh, Bet, bet Hannah didn't realize I'd have a feedback loop with Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely didn't realize that. Um, all right. Well, Kyle, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for this season. I'm a little nervous for this season, but uh, I'm glad. To, I feel like you have a really good, just like, you know, had obviously had in your shoulders and good perspective on all of this. And um, it heats up. It heats up. Yeah. I mean, it's, no, but, it's off to a, a little yeah. bit of an awkward start, yeah. but. I mean, there's only so many July 4th parties you can watch. You know, this was like, all right, some friendships are going to be put to the test. We're tested. That's- yeah. And, yeah. I, and I hope and I hope that you guys, I think you guys will pass that test in, in the long run. So um, Thank th- thanks for being generous with your time today. And uh, we'll talk soon. You, you got it. Thank you, Gibson. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at InTheKnow.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.